CV 2021-21574 is also known as BIOS Disconnect, and it's even got a nice little logo. All right, so this is a vulnerability in the firmware of Dell laptops. And as background, the Unified Extensible Firmware Interface, or UEFI, is a firmware interface specification. It is not a firmware of it in and of itself. And it's a specification used predominantly in Intel systems, but it does find some use on um, other phones and things like that as well, ARM-based phones. So Dell laptops have a basic input-output system, or BIOS, that implements the UEFI specification. And then within the Dell UEFI BIOS, they have a feature called BIOS Connect. And that is hence the name BIOS Disconnect because the vulnerability is in this feature. The feature specifically allows for remote updates to the Dell BIOS. So when thinking about the UEFI BIOS, you should think of it as the code that runs earliest on the Intel CPU, and it subsequently hands off to a bootloader, which loads an operating system like Windows or Linux, and then subsequently the OS allows you to run applications. So the simplified flow given by the Eclipsium presentation is that the Dell firmware reaches out to a Dell.com website via SSL and subsequently pulls down a catalog bc.xml, which it parses in order to decide whether it's doing a firmware over the air update or an operating system update. So this mechanism supports both uh, the firmware itself being updated as well as the operating system. Now they found multiple vulnerabilities and in my opinion, the most severe one was the one that allowed for bypassing of the HTTPS uh, protection. The whole architecture was predicated on the idea that, well, this data that's coming down over HTTPS can't be manipulated because it's securely uh, digitally signed and encrypted using Dell certificates. And unfortunately, they found that the code in the BIOS would accept a wildcard certificate, meaning not just ones that are from Dell.com, but one that the attacker could control. Subsequently, that means all of this various XML and all of this um, UEFI code coming in is viewable as attacker-controlled input or ACID. But we're going to focus just on this last CVE having to do with JSON parsing in the SHA-256 field because that's what they wrote their proof of concept for. So if this initial vulnerability allows for the cancellation of the security provided by SSL, then there are subsequent vulnerabilities in both the parsing of the catalog and the FOTA EFI and the CSAS EFI. So for instance, in the catalog uh, bc.xml, there's this base location, which you can see here, they've helpfully denoted by all A's, which is of course an acid burn. And then in the CSAS EFI URL field, again, all A's, acid content. And as we said, we're going to be working our way towards the SHA-256 field, which clearly has acid in it. So this is an example of what a proof of concept might look like because the SHA-256 field is expecting to hold ASCII-encoded hex values for a SHA-256 hash, unfortunately it doesn't have any appropriate length checks and consequently it can just have a arbitrarily long hex string. And that means that as opposed to vulnerabilities where you have to worry about characters that are outside of the ASCII string range, this can just allow for encoding arbitrary hex bytes, which will be converted back into binary. So the researchers provided us the following pseudocode indicating where the vulnerability was. So let's go ahead and zoom in on that and take a little bit of closer look. Now the original researchers confirmed there was actually a typo in the original presentation pseudocode that I've corrected here so that it shows it being left shifted by 4 bits instead of left shifted by 8 bits. So this is where you're going to need to find the flaw. And the thing that I want to indicate is this RBP-158 is basically trying to tell you that wherever this write pointer is, wherever this buffer on the stack is, it's at some offset minus 158. So the size of this buffer is not going to be considered to be greater than 158 hex uh, bytes. So we've got a while loop where it's doing string length on the hex pointer. This is going to be the input, the string in the XML. Uh, that was shown as A's or all 90, 90, 90 and a bunch of data. And so it's going to be checking that and looping through that. And while that index is less than the string length, it's going to convert the data and write it at the pointer. So you need to go find the vulnerability. I'm going to also provide you with a little bit of a stack view, again, just to indicate that the buffer on the stack 
is at some location called RBP-158. This just has to do with x86 assembly and calling conventions and stuff like that. And I can't assume you know x86, so that's why I'm providing this, uh, this picture. This is just to indicate that you know, we know that stack buffer overflows are trying to do things like overwrite the return address on the stack. And for this particular system, it's using a calling convention that saves a particular register here and then subtracts down to allocate space for a buffer. And so that's where we find our buffer. All right, with that picture in mind, go and find the flaw.